Hey everyone, this is Keith Scott from out in Sydney, Australia. I'm one of the voices of Bullwinkle J. Moose. It's time to watch Relentless and Unstoppable. And so give it up for your main hosts, Douglas Kenny and Andy McPhee. Hey everybody, this is Doug Kenny and welcome to Relentless and Unstoppable. We have another amazing guest coming on the channel today, so please hit like and subscribe. And after this episode, please stay tuned to the RNU channel for more amazing guests. Let's get this on! Hey everybody, how you doing? Just a, a quick uh, little share of why I started Relentless and Unstoppable. It was for one very simple reason, because of Doug Kenny. Nothing to do with me at all, zero. I was just coaching Doug and he took on the coaching and mentoring and he made all the changes. He took all the suggestions from his his parents as well as my, my coaching, but it was all about Doug, his breakthrough and his weight loss, uh, he, his willingness to accept that uh, he is dealing with high functioning autism and, and other issues, but he's never quit, he's never given up. So we did one interview with him to share his story and then we decided to start interviewing other people. And Doug has now taken over the whole channel and he does all the interviews. He runs everything. He's just an amazing young man. So RNU was born from simply what an amazing young man Doug is and his story needed to be shared. <laughs> and sometimes we need lessons, don't we? We do, and I needed a lesson because you know, my gloating was like Richard Sherman, like gloating in the NFL, sort of. <laughs> but yeah. yeah. Okay. But yeah, I'm I'm never doing that again. And I I will admit that I still gloat occasionally when I'm playing a game, but it's all for fun now, rather than to hurt others. Like for example, when I went when I'm in. Normally when I go to Osborne for my usual day treatment for people on the autism spectrum like myself, we'll usually play like a game of badminton in the summer or something. And, and sometimes what I do is occasionally, if I'll purposely hit the thingamajig with the racket in a way where it would be impossible for the players to hit it in time or even react to it, you know what I mean? Uh -huh. And whenever it inevitably falls to the ground, sometimes I'll say out of fun, Guys, you're supposed to hit it. Come on. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and I've gotten it thrown back at me a few times when I've missed. <laughs> you know what I mean? I know. I, I absolutely do. <laughs> yeah. In fact, it was really surprising because one of the guys that threw that insult back to me was a guy that's normally chill and calm. And so I, I just remember him hitting it and I missed it. And he was like, you're supposed to hit it, you know? <laughs> and when he said that, I was like, that's the spirit, you know? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> so just doing it out of fun now, you know? Not really to hurt others. <laughs> yeah. And then I had my own teammate toss me the thingamajig with his racket, and when I failed to hit it, he just said, you're supposed to hit it, Doug. <laughs> you know? Well. Wow. You got to take what you dish out, you know. <laughs> That's true. That is so true. Yeah, yeah. So what are your hopes? Oh, wait. Wait, uh, that, now that I mentioned that, I should mention Corella DeVille's going mad at the end and trying to run the truck off the road and then Horace and Jasper, you know, hitting her car. Horace, Jasper, you were supposed to hit the truck. Come on. <laughs> You know what I mean? Yeah. But yeah, anyway, uh, what are your hopes for the future since you're not really going to partake in the normal activities in Vegas? Are you just hoping to retire in peace or what do you have planned? I haven't got anything planned except finishing moving and getting settled and making my house nice. And that's going to take months and months, and maybe I'll be dead at the end. <laughs> so there you are. Because <laughs> I'm old. Yeah. So we'll see. We'll see how I do. Yeah, for sure. 
I can recommend a couple things just if you're interested for if you're still alive by then. <laughs> I was okay. I'd recommend I'd recommend that if you're living in Vegas that you pay a visit to uh, Zion National Park or Bryce Canyon. There there oh, was I've been to Zion. I've been there. Isn't it amazing or what? Amazing. Amazing. I haven't been to Bryce, but I've been to Zion. I was there with when my youngest daughter was pretty young. We used to take summer trips together. And we went and did uh, Utah one year. Yeah, it was fun. Yeah, Arches National Park. And yeah, if you go to Bryce Canyon, if you go through Zion National Park on that road through that tunnel, you go through a few t twists and turns and then you exit Zion. If you if you take a turn and go north, you can reach Bryce Canyon within an hour or more, I think. So Oh, that's good. That's that's a good tip. Yeah, just a tip for it cuz uh cuz all you have to do is when you exit the park, you go through a little bit of foothills and then you enter a valley, go north and then there's a road that takes you to the, to Bryce Canyon. So you should check that out. I went there okay. I went there a few years back, and I it was pretty wet though, and I went there just in time because the minute we exited the park, a blizzard struck. A, a blizzard. Oh my gosh. A blizzard struck, and my my uh, my uh, tail was froze, and my nose was froze, <laughs> my ears are froze, and my toes are froze. <laughs> oh dear. <laughs> Yeah, and then we had to take shelter in, I think, some sort of a building, but it wasn't a dairy farm. It was a, I think it was a restaurant of sorts with, like, mounts. <laughs> well, that's better. <laughs> that's better. And now that I think of it, I actually recall, I think I, if I remember right, and I'm being serious about this, that there was a collie in the area at the time of the restaurant <laughs> and the blizzard. Oh, my gosh, that's good. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, but it didn't have a British accent. It just barked. <laughs> <laughs> well, yeah. Uh, it's been lovely talking to you. Yeah. So this is. It's been lucky. I mean, it's been lucky to talk with you as well, and lovely as well. So yeah, this is my final question. Um, how do you think your role in 101 Dalmatians can impact the world going forward? I think anything that shows dogs positively, you know, some people are afraid of dogs. I don't quite understand it, but, you know, sometimes people get bit when they're a little child and that stays with them. But anything that can promote dogs and show how wonderful dogs are is good to me. That's perfect. And I think that's what it does. It shows how wonderful dogs are. Yeah, for sure. So that sounds good, and uh, hopefully there's more movies about dogs in the future and the beauty they can offer the world, because they're therapeutic, and there's dog therapy, and they're just amazing creatures, you know? And no movies where dogs die at the end. No nope. dead dogs. No, I don't like dead dogs, and I don't even like... I'm trying to transition to veganism at the moment. I'm in the middle of it, but I don't like how industries treat animals, especially the ones that are meant for food. It's it's the world needs to change in that area, but there should be no killing of animals in my opinion. Yeah, I don't want any movies with dead dogs. No, nope, I won't go see them. If the dog dies at the end, forget it. Yeah. End it before the dog dies. Not after the dog dies. Don't want, don't need that. Yeah. And a bunch of us won't go see, if it's a dead dog in the forget it. That's it. We won't go see the movie. Yep, me too. You know, I, you know, there's just things, and you would agree with this with social media as well, you know, there are just things that don't need to be shown or don't need to be said, and there's info Absolutely. that... Absolutely, yeah. yeah. Yeah, from a moral standpoint, you know. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So, yeah, it's a good thing that the puppies survived uh, the the chase of Corella Deville, though, and the whole fiasco with that. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it is good. It's very good. Yeah, and yeah. They got to live their lives on the Dalmatian plantation. Yeah. So this is how we'll wrap up, everyone. 
We're going to wrap it up 101 Dalmatian style. We'll have a Dalmatian plantation where our population can roam. In this new location, well, our whole aggregation will love our plantation home. <coughs> Dalmatian <coughs> plantation home. <laughs> and I'll just say, without Cruella, Cruella de Vil. <laughs> <laughs> So everybody, we'll see you next time on R&U. Gee, that's all we have for Relentless and Unstoppable. So tune into the next episode to hear more amazing stories from amazing guests. This is Keith Scott from Sydney, Australia saying so long and uh, I'm smarter than the average bear. Gee.